Welcome to the 103rd New Zealand Golf Open. We are back in Queenstown. We're back at Millbrook. This is going to be one hell of a contest. Can't wait for it all to get started. And two of the very best are back with us. Our captain, our leader, Stephen Fleming, and our beloved Australian, Ricky Ponton. I say that right now, but we'll see later in the week once the competitive juices start to flow. Flem, for you, I know you work hard every year to get yourself back to Queenstown between the massive schedule you have as a coach in T20 cricket around the world, but why is it important for you to be here? Well, I just love it. It's just a great week. It's a chance to mix with athletes that do something special and to get inside the ring and, and experience the, the pressure, um, the accuracy, the brilliance of some of these players and enjoy a magnificent surrounds. But spend time with guys like you um, and just just relax. I think it's, it's a wonderful week. I find that hard to believe when you said that, to be fair, Ricky. But for you, it's been a couple of years, though, right? Do you look at me or do you look at you? No, I don't know. There's a bit of both of us, to be fair. But it's been a couple of years for you. COVID hit, and all of a sudden it hasn't quite worked in terms of schedules. But how excited are you to be back? Uh, we've had a bit of a practice round today. Are you, yeah. are you feeling good? Are you feeling confident? And, and to be back here at the Open? Yeah, I think I played four or five in a row, I think, right at yeah. the start. A few of those with Flem, and then missed a couple with COVID, and last year didn't quite work. But... Um, you just feel really lucky to be involved in, in the event. I mean, we get looked after really well, and talk, even talking to the, not just the amateur players, you talk to the professionals as well, and they rate this as their best week of the year. So when that's coming from the pros that play a lot of great tournaments around the world, it makes you realise how special this week is. So, yeah, I'm thankful to be here again. Um, we'll do whatever we can to help um, keep promoting the event and doing what we can that way. But, um, yeah, once Thursday morning starts and you, you put the tee in the ground... And it's, on. The, it's on. It's well, yeah. on. And it's right, because, Flynn, we do it all the time, don't we? We played rounds of golf but it's nothing like this all of a sudden when you're playing with pros and they're playing the game properly. Punter's on a scratch, so he plays it magnificently. We battle our way around, that's let's right. be fair. That's but ultimately, correct. those that do, that's a different feeling, right? There's a different pressure. And seeing these athletes in that circumstance is something to admire and behold. Well, it is, especially when you're getting jibbed by the crowd. You say, you should have the tools. Well, I ain't got any. And that's the problem, is yeah. that when you train in your own profession and you learn to cope and, and, and get the skills you need to get through pressure situations. It's a bit different. So admiring these players and the, the tunnel vision in a way to get the job done. The, the ball doesn't move, but it's an incredibly complex sport to play and get a, get a grasp on and play it consistently well. You, one one you, thing I'd love, actually, is to, to, to get a heart rate monitor on us yeah. oh, on the golf course. Yeah, that's good call. Oh. On the first tee, just have it strapped up with a heart rate yep. monitor. Just have a check at what it yep. is. And then we'll get Mike Hendry and the boys in the nets against against um, oh, that would be good. Mitchell Stark and, and Cummins and just see what their heart rate gets up to. Do you realise that could be arranged very easily for you on the first tee here <laughs> on Thursday? <laughs> I'll, I, I'll knock I, it back. I, I tell you what, the, the, the difference between you and I will be significant. <laughs> there'll be, there'll be, no, there'll be, be no doubt about it. Look, in terms of the ambassador programme, and look, it's, I've been a privileged to be a part of it for so long now Flynn. but it's something that's grown and changed over time and you know there's some players Israel Dags come into the fold young buck uh, big responsibilities for him in both of them just Sir Ian just comes and goes he's here every year he's he has a red he goes fishing does he ever you know, leave we're not sure oh actually that's a good point I don't know I've never seen him at the airport um but oh, he I, does because he pops up in Australia for the couple of months. To, <laughs> yeah, to pay for his trip yeah, exactly. Here, that's all he does. He, he gets to Australia, take, fills his pockets up, then comes over to Queenstown for a couple of months. But it's one of those events, right, where all of a sudden you are seeing other athletes from other sport who take up golf. Where it's a privilege to, to be a part of it, but also there's a bit of a camaraderie between us, right? Because we know the responsibility we have. Yeah, it, it is. It's important. It's taken seriously. There's some good events throughout the the tournament and 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 pre as well, just creating a little bit of. Uh, a bit of notice, a bit of awareness, what's going on. But Tom Walsh is a good example. Yep. Tom Walsh is a golfer. When Tom turned up, it's like, well, what, what to expect? But uh, Tom loved a beer. He, he swings the golf club nicely. He's a hell of a nice guy. So the chance not just to meet golfers, but to meet people who have done well in, in New Zealand sport and international sport or a Claim for, for other skills is um, is a great opportunity. Hayden Patton, rally driver, mm. you're never sure. Yeah, he's, 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 he sent a message, he can't be here, he's doing his quiff. I don't know if you've seen his new ad, but he's got the most magnificent new hairdo. Has he? Just quiff across. Yeah, Joined the family. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Very proud of him. Is there hope for me? Ah, uh, <laughs> better days, Mike. <laughs> okay, all right. So, so out, out of the ambassador team, we've certainly we've certainly got a superstar that has arrived, Ricky, and, and to have Ash Barty at this tournament, in fact, she's won one three Grand Slam titles as a tennis player, to have her here and, and playing in this tournament. I mean, um, it's special to have someone like that who's probably, I'm, I'm interested to, to see in how she deals with this mm. pressure because as an individual athlete, we're in team sports, given you're a batsman and it's a, an individual game in the game of cricket, but 
for her dealing with this pressure. How do you think she might go? No, she'll be fine. I, I, I played an event with her in the States last year, the Icons Cup thing that we, we played together, and she went against a seven foot two linebacker from the N, N, NFL and in the singles and cleaned him up. She'll be fine. Um, like she's a, she's a good player actually, and I think the fact it's, it probably is different. You know, she's been, as you say, an individual on the biggest stage. You know, winning major championships. Yeah. I, I think that pressure is you know you can sort of bring that across to the golf course as well. The individual pressure more so than sort of being in a team sport. And if you if you happen to fail, have someone that can pick up the pieces behind you. So no, look, she's she's a great person um, and, a, and a good player. And I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised if her and her partner make the cut this week. Well, you guys are clearly still active in cricket. And you're both coaching around the world, uh, both off to the IPL, right? Uh, there'll be a bit of competitive yep. juices around that. I don't know how much you'll give away on this trip, but the game's certainly changed. But Flemont, I, I want to ask you about my um, fledgling cricket career. When I, I played for you, was there a, quite with, a bit of with doubt? Me. Well, well, was there quite a bit of doubt when you gave the ball to me when I was bowling? I, I got the sense every time you try to set a field. What was difficult about it when, when you were setting a field when I was bowling? You just weren't able to put fielders 10 rows back. <laughs> and that was a challenge. <laughs> did that have anything to do with the size of Eden Park? <laughs> it might have done. It was never the case, Jeff. But we did have one occasion, didn't we, when the first ever T20 International came up and you'd just come back. Uh, from doing a bit of rugby stuff as well, and we had to bowl to this guy. Well, no, we didn't have guy. to. No, no, we didn't. <laughs> well, I felt a part I had of it. To. Yeah. Did you feel a part <laughs> yeah, I of felt that? A part of it. But would you have even believed where the game of T20 has got to right now? Well, no, that day was a bit of fun. We 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 a bit of a fancy dress and had the old um, uh, facial hair. You guys didn't get the invite, I don't think. We had the retro kit. That was about enough. Yeah. But the, the few of us couldn't do much with our hair <laughs> leading into that. McGrath, McGrath tried the Lloyd Christmas <laughs> dumb and dumber sort of look, but that was about as good as it got from the Aussies. Well, we had Hamish Marshall, didn't we, who chomped it and just throwed it up. But we at that stage, it was it was a great game. Um, there'd been some games in England, it's sort of a little bit of, of county stuff, and I had experienced that. But in terms of international, it was a great experience. It was a, a great occasion. But no, can you go forward what 15 16 17 years and say well look at the game now it really is probably one of the heartbeats of the game if not the heartbeat of the game for for money and for what players want yeah well that was the first international play between us that day and I, I did the press conference before the game and said that I, I thought that this format was going to be a great marketing tool for the 50 over game you know just to get a newer younger crowd in into the game of cricket show them what t20 cricket is and then hopefully they'll stick on and like the 50 over game more because the 50 over game at that stage was probably starting to drop off a little bit but it's gone the other way it's left left the 50 over game behind and a lot of the players have left the 50 over game behind as well so there are a lot of um a lot of fears i think around the world about probably 50 over cricket and test cricket on the back of how successful the t20 came, game has become um especially i think you know australia england india will probably keep promoting the test match game as much as they can but you can understand some of the other countries not pushing it so much you know sri lanka bangladesh the west indies even kiwis to a certain it's point just it expensive. Yeah, it's expensive it's expensive right, yeah. to run it's expensive to play in time wise and it, it's difficult the, the game has never had more money in it but international cricket has never been poorer yeah has it changed the game though? It appears as though that all of a sudden all forms have got more aggressive. How batsmen go and approach their innings, the fact that it seems as though you, the, the belief now you're, you've, you're playing shots that are more familiar to, to you than they were when we played. You know, you, the V was a, a genuine thing, whereas now you're seeing players who are coming through the ranks and swapping and changing from one um, sort of the game to the other type of the game. I mean, Ricky, when you look at it, how much of an impact has the T20 had on, on all forms? Oh, look, there's no doubt that it's, I think it's had a, it's had an impact. I'm not sure how great an impact it's had. I think, I think it just depends who you pick in your test teams. I mean, if you look at the way Australia, uh, probably even India and, and even New Zealand to that point, like we haven't really adopted that ultra-aggressive approach that England have adopted, you know, and I think what we've seen since Brendan's been in charge of this English test team, that they're willing to play one way and most other countries are going to play the other way and they're going to see whose method sort of stands up under, under the most pressure and... You know, Australia's method stood up in England. England's method probably hasn't stood up in India in pretty trying conditions. So, but I, I've got a feeling that the way we start, well, the way we start to pick test teams, because there's so much exposure to the T20 game at a, long, uh, a lot younger age now, I think a lot more guys are going to get picked into test cricket out of T20 backgrounds, a la David Warner all those years ago. We've got another kid in, in Australia now, um, Jake Fraser-McGurk. I'm not sure you've seen him. Yeah. 
He's really burst onto the scene in Big Bash this year, and he's he's probably going to work his way into a test team on the back of T20 performances. So he's got his eye on him. Don't worry, but he's drafting no, we players. All have, right? yeah, no, exactly, yeah, they're exactly. All yeah. Have, yeah. Everyone's auctioned and there's, yeah, there's bids going left, right. Yeah. He's expensive, right? But that's to, you, to your point. He's expensive. All of a sudden, you're in a marketplace for players. I mean, and there's so many different T20 leagues around the world. Flem, I mean, is this is this the best way to take cricket to the rest of the world? Well, to, to a degree, you, you go right back. And your initial question, we had pioneers of the game. You look at the Gilchrist, Viv Richards, um, and you had Shaywag. Kevin Peterson, Shaywag, who tried things, but the establishment and the, the, the history of the game kept suppressing it. Now what T20 has done is allowed these players just to be free, and you, you're seeing a crop of players who have no fear. I, the skill level has gone up as they've, they've trained and practiced this, but the players, certainly players that I played with, if they had that same freedom, would have would have probably yeah. been able to do the same thing. It's yeah. just that the attitude towards it has changed, and that's a good thing. It's the entertainment business that we're in, and it's entertaining people. T20 has done that. It's also hopefully going to bridge the gap where you have school children that play, and then you lose them for a period of time because it's too time-consuming. So T20 can fill that. What you have to watch now, though, is that the, the coaching methods are the other way around. So it used to be defence first, then learn how to get an attacking game. Now these young kids are coming with such a massive attacking game, the defence is dying. So when it gets a little bit tricky, you're seeing teams being bowled out really cheap because the skills aren't quite as good because they're not honed over um, days hours, and yeah. weeks and hours yeah. of practice defence and yeah. in first-class cricket. So you're getting this product where these kids are incredibly skillful but there might be a leg spinner, they do well, it's something a little bit different, a mystery spinner, and they have great success because the knowledge of cricket is slowly dying, defensively slowly dying, because T20 is so attractive to hit the ball and, and get the money and bright lights. That's a great explanation. Is that a reverse? No, I don't know what happened there. That was amazing. <laughs> That's the best I've ever heard you deliver it. That was, that was yeah. just, all of a sudden you got into the zone and there yeah. it, it well, came out. Well, I was going to elaborate on it because if you look back five or six years ago, Glenn Maxwell was always criticised about his reverse, reverse sweeps swing. and reverse yep. hitting. And, and but if he had put them in the cupboard then, yeah. he wouldn't have turned into the player that he's become now. He, he wouldn't have been able to make that 200 in the, in the World Cup to get Australia across the line. Mm. Beca so, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't sort of beat out of these players. And he was, he was strong enough to put his hand up and say, no, I know if I get this right. And the only way I can get it right is to take the ups and downs in game to get it right. And because he's had so much success doing it in game, it's become second nature to him. And now he's almost impossible to bowl to in the 50 over game. With the, you know, with the field restrictions the way they are, there's always a gap when the spinners are on and you know, he's, he's, got been, everything. he's able to manipulate, manipulate the field the way he wants it. There's still good. some rumbling though. You know, when Joe Root plays the old reverse sweep, it's yep. sort of the old establishment takes a big gasp yeah, didn't breath. They? Exactly, yeah, yeah, so absolutely. There's, there's still, and you'll see if it doesn't quite work out how the, the English media now will treat the... We in a, in a test match with a new ball it might be slightly different than, than <laughs> yeah. playing it in the back half of a 50 over game. But. Yeah, true. <laughs> I had yeah, a feeling no this, would happen. <laughs> this would happen in this chat. That's to start talking to each other. That's generally what happens when these two guys get together. That's better. Uh, let's talk about Australian cricket though, because probably no one's, no country's had as many great eras as Australian cricket has had. So, uh, do you feel they're in one right now, punter? That with this group here, are they of the beginning of one? No, yeah, or yeah, you compared have to. to yours, and then the era before that. I mean, do you look at that and go, you know what, they've they've created something special, just like the team you had? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think there's any doubt about it. I mean, they mightn't have some of the things that Steve Waugh's team did, and you know, the team that I kept winning, winning 16 consecutive Test matches. That's not an easy thing to do, and this team might be able to do it. But if you look at the, the numbers of the players, I mean, the, 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 the bowling group that are together now with the three quicks and Nathan Lyon, have, I think they've all taken now maybe in excess of 300 wickets each. That's never happened in the history of the game where you've got four bowlers in the same team with over 300 test wickets. Yeah. In fact, it hadn't happened when there was over 250 test wickets. So you look at that bowling group and you've you got to say, geez, that's probably as good as any bowling attack that's ever mm. played the game. Um, you know, there'll be arguments, you know, McGrath, Lee, um, Warren, you know, Gillespie, that, that attack, is, is that as good? Then you look at the batters, you know, Smith averages 60, Labuschagne's up in the high 50s, Kawaja's averaging over 50 now, uh, Travis Head's averaged 50 the last couple of years. So it's it's pretty hard to argue against how good this this current team is across all three formats as well. Yep. You know, they've won the 50 over World Cup, T20 World Cup's just around the corner, but they're certainly leaving their own mark and their own legacy on the game, no doubt about it. Is that what you see, Flynn, when you see that group? Yeah, it sort of snuck up on it on me, really. Um, and it's when you start hearing those stats, you see the World Cups and they've got a chance of winning all three, which is a, would be very unique and, and a great achievement. Uh, the only question is a little bit of longevity. Like the, the, the teams that Pana mentioned, the Steve Waugh team and, and Ricky's team, there was a long period of time. Now, whether there's not quite as 
longer period of dominance, yeah. which could happen. They could be well and truly on the way to that. Um, but no doubt the numbers and the way they play and the skill that they have, they are right up there. I want to talk about great players, you know, and, and you know, when you reflect on careers and who you played with, and you know, you're a great player yourself, punter, so this is a hard question because a lot of players would say you. When you think about the guys that you played with, or it might have been played against, who, who were the best? Who was the best of them? Jacques Carlos is the best cricketer that I played against. And absolutely, hands down, there, there is no doubt about it. You look at a complete cricketer. I mean, he he was just a, a born cricketer, big, strong guy. Best you know, player to ever play the game. He's got to be. It's, it, there's an argument there to say that. Well, he's, yeah. You know, if you look at if you if you look at his bowling career only, he, he survived in Test cricket as a bowler. You know, nearly 300 Test wickets as a bowler, and then 40 odd Test hundreds at at mid 50s. I mean, has there ever been a better? Isn't player? it? Isn't it? Brett Lee is a bowler, and Ricky Ponting is a batter. I don't know. It's, it's pretty it's, close to stats. Was well, I think it's something like that. And you put it that way. The impact so, he had on the game, right? Yeah, and he's, and and probably 300 slip catches as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's just a just a born cricketer, and he was someone that never went to the gym all the time. You know, he'd bat and bowl in the nets. He was just a just a, a cricketer. Um, Lara was the best and most skilled batsman that I ever saw. You know, Tendulkar, technically. Um, the best that I ever played with or against, but I never had the same fear that he was going to take a game away from me like I did with with Brian. Brian, you know, he could just win a game off his own bat and had to most of his career in the West Indies teams that he played in. Um, so, you know, if he, if if West Indies were chasing a score on day five and I was going to sleep at um, uh, bedtime on day four and Lara was still out there, I, I wasn't sleeping too well because I knew what he was capable. Of. He was probably still out there though. Not just from the night before, getting out, yeah. ready for the day after. Yeah, you know, he, he was. Well, you, I, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what you say, Flynn. But he, he, he was just a match winner. Yeah. No, I actually concur with both of those. Callis's longevity as well to play two the slash three formats and do what he did. But bowling wise, was he Macram? Was was the one I had to that list. But um, Lara, exactly the same reasons. Well summed up. Akram to me was the most skilled natural bowler that that I faced. There's some beautiful bowlers around Warren. Um, obviously McGrath and the, the, the great players Courtney Walsh, Ambrose magnificent but Akram in terms of the subtlety and skill that he had was in pace um, was, was an amazing athlete So the reason I ask that is because the debate about New Zealand's greatest cricket always comes up right? and we know Sir Richard Headley and, and forever we all watch the class growing up of Martin Crowe but we've got someone in Kane Williamson who's just continued to deliver and been through some challenges injury-wise, but every time he's been out there for a consistent period of time, Flem, the stats don't lie about how effective he's been at, at pretty much all forms of the game. Where, where do you see Kane Williamson in the list of great New Zealand cricketers? Well, the fact that you're debating him with Sir Richard Hadley is a, is a sign that he's right up there, no doubt about it. Sir Richard, just the ability to, to win games and to do it long period of time, bat and, and ball, uh, gets a special mention, but... Kane's numbers are extraordinary from a New Zealand player. He's breaking all sorts of records. He's pushed the ceiling up so high, he's dragged others with him, I'm sure. Uh, and the way in which he's done it and the way he conducts himself, it's just business as usual. So it's, it, look, it's it's very close. It, it's emotional. And I just don't like ranking them, but they're so good. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're by so far, close, right? by far, they're so yeah, much better yeah, than anything we've had. They're just yeah. extraordinary. He brought up a, a great word before, and that was longevity. I think by the time Kane finishes, he'll be New Zealand's greatest player. Like he's he's not there yet, but he's was he played hundred tests? Uh, just coming up, actually. I think the series is a hundred. Yeah, I and think so he's probably got another forty or fifty tests ahead of him. He could make for mid forty test match hundreds if he does that. Then he will be New Zealand's greatest player. I just want to ask another question about Kane because it's there's there's almost a classical way he's gone about it though. When you look at him, you know, you look at how you know a lot of the great run scorers are really really aggressive, but he he seems to still do it within himself am I right in saying that when, when I watch him play um, is that what you guys see I mean because you, you guys are living and breathing it every day I'm just watching him from a from an average fan watching him going we well, it's like it's low risk the way he goes about it and yeah. scoring I, I think it's a little bit condition dependent I, it's a good track he scores all those guys Root um, Coley the, the, the Fab Four they, they score when they're going well they're around about a run and ball they've, they've easily scored hundreds just below like 70 or 80 strike rate which was a Hell of a strike rate in one day cricket when we played, yeah. but they when they're on. But you've also seen Kane in the, the last test against South Africa sort of almost drop anchor. It was difficult. So very much condition based, which is one of his skills. He just he, he sums it up very well and then just and, and just uses the, uh, the the style or method that he wants. It's going to get the job done. Well, big news uh, announced in the last couple of days. Neil Wagner has decided it's time to call and pull stumps on his test career for the Black Caps. What impact do you think he has had on this team and what's he added to this group? 
We saw a huge amount. It's underrated because what he became, he, he became the, the, thought, the spinner. He bowled the spinners overs, but he did them in an aggressive way. So when the game was meandering, he had Southie and Bolton, Jamison swinging and seaming it. When it was just starting to meander, he would come in with a technique that was a little bit controversial, but it was a real skill to be able to get guys unsettled. And it did two things. It stopped scoring, yeah. but it also got some wickets. Yep. So they were able to then use that as a defensive end and rotate the other ends. And in some ways it was the demise of spin. Spin didn't really play a part because he was doing those overs, doing them so well and, and doing them for so long in terms of the spells that he could bowl that he really owned that space. It was quite unique. And to be honest, I think other teams picked up on the back of that as well. Yeah. Like we saw Australia use it in the Ashes. We've seen England use it as well. Like that short, sharp burst of six, eight, ten overs where the field goes back, the, the scoreboard stops, you pick up a couple of wickets along the yeah. way. Actually... Australia used it beautifully at Lords in the second test in the Ashes. You know, England were one for 160. Cummins reverts to this heavy onside field, short ball attack. They lost six wickets in about half an hour, yeah, and the test match is gone. So that might not have happened if Wagner and New Zealand hadn't brought that into the game four or five years ago. And, and the type of energy he used to bring. I mean, those players sometimes are just valuable to have in your squad, right? Well, well they, all lift of a sudden, they lift everyone lift up. Him, right? I mean, he, he would bowl 10 over spells of it, wouldn't he? Run yeah, in, he would bend his back and just keep coming and coming. You, you don't find those guys all the time that, one, are willing to do it, put their body on the line, and are good enough to do it over a long period of time. But it says a lot about him, what his team needed at the time, that you know, it, maybe this is not exactly the way I want to bowl, but my team need, need me to do it. I'm going to run in and do it. And... See if I can change the course of the game. But it's also skillful yep. to be able to, because two, two and over, the bouncers are one even we started doing. And then two, per and over. so if you blew them early, then the, the tactic's over. So mm. the ability to operate the horrible, and, and you could see guys trying to work out where, how are they going to play it aggressively or defensively and, and constantly sort of getting them in a mud. It'd be horrible to face. You guys are just like me when I start talking about rugby. You get knee deep, you, all of a sudden you start yeah. talking well, through it, because it's great, because I, I love hearing it. You know, it's, it's when, when there's people who have played it at such a high level and who are living and breathing it like you guys are. You're not doing that now, though, and I think it's really important we do focus on now. When you think about our team, if we, we've got someone in our group who can change the energy levels in our group, who is it? Flem, you're the skipper. Who are you relying on to turn the group around if things aren't quite firing? <laughs> look at me. I'm looking at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, is, is, is that because he's the best golfer? No, where's Andy? Where's Andy? Yeah, Andy, 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 Andy Lee. Andy Lee. A lot of guys who can yap, 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 but when you really need some substance... I, oh. I think, I think it's you, big guy. Okay. So come, we're thinking come Saturday, possibly Sunday, that this is our best bet right here? We haven't had anyone go through, I don't think, for a number of years. Well, was you, probably... I think you were the last. Is, is that why you mentioned that you were the last one to play in the final That was team? nine years ago. Well, that's Jeff. what I'm saying. We haven't had many people go through, to yeah. be fair. And so... at times, John Hart has put a lot of pressure on us not to, which is akin to match fixing. So we're going <laughs> to buck that theory. And actually and make a real play this, this year. I'm, I'm, like, I'm, like I'm back in Ash. Ash will get through. I'm not sure what handicap she's on this this week. She she'll love she'll love being here. She'll love the she'll crowd. She'll thrive on it. She'll love the pressure. The pressure. On the she might just have to run off between nines and go and feed the baby and come back. That's the only issue we've got. <laughs> she's probably well and truly capable of doing that. I have no doubt about it. I'll say this though: uh, if there's one person you'd like to be in the group, who would it? If, if you, for you, so today when you can right. stand on that balcony on Sunday and you can look around the ambassadors, and go well. At least I beat him. Oh, Brendan Jones. Oh, you meant ambassadors? No, not the, the not the defending champion of the tournament. <sighs> um, I, I don't. I'm not really wired that way. I'm really going for that team aspect, okay. Jeff. I know this no, no, competition. That's the leadership but... I expect from you. But I, I know as a competitor, <laughs> you know. I mean, for you, because I know how much it frustrates you when you don't get the opportunity to go further. Because that's what you, what you love. I mean, is it? Oh well, yeah. I'd like, like to make it through to the weekend. But if I if if we don't, we don't. I mean, as long as I beat Beefy, who's the only pom in the field, then I'll be happy. But you are, to be fair, you're a, you're a golf snuff. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. You that, love it. That'll be fair. Oh, hold on. We're all here because we love it, right? What, what's not to love? No, that, no. I think Rick's got a new level, though. Well, actually, last time, I, last time I saw him, he, the first thing he said to me, oh, I've just got all this new Callaway gear. Like, it's a, like, so don't call me the golf snub. I'm hitting it 20 metres further. Yeah, but, but did he say which direction? <laughs> he didn't say anything When you about see him watch the goal with Ricky and every pro walks past him, G'day, Panda, how are you, mate? You good? Yeah. yeah good. Yep. How are you going to play? How are you going? Yeah, they, they know who the best is. Ricky, have you seen anything in my game? That's the one. <laughs> Actually, he was very helpful to me today, so I'm, I'll, I'll take everything I possibly get. Flem, good luck. Punter, good luck. Let's have another great week here in Queenstown. Thanks, Scotty.